I all hope all is well. Now, I just wanted to do a quick update on my sodium hydroxide production. So, as you can see in my previous video, I used electrolysis to process seawater to extract chlorine and sodium hydroxide and maybe natrium. However, we're uncertain as to whether it's sodium hydroxide or if it's natrium. At this stage, the best way to test that is to actually um, test some of the clear liquid and also test some of the cloudy liquid. But at this stage tonight, I've gone ahead and I've taken a quarter of a cup of the clear liquid and I've put it into a stove, onto a stove top, sorry, into a saucepan and I evaporated all the water off it until we're left with some crystals, um, as you can see here. Now, the crystals themselves weigh about two and a half to three grams of crystals that come off it, and I'm assuming it's sodium hydroxide. However, I actually had a taste of it, and it's still a little bit salty, um, which is an indication that it could have used a little more electrolysis to process the salts even further to produce the sodium hydroxide and the chlorine on the positive anode. Um, so the best way to test that was I went back through my previous journals and I come across a soap recipe. Now soap is basically sodium hydroxide, a small amount of water and a fairly large amount of oil. So for example, with today's um, recipe that I used, I took what would normally use to make a large quantity and I just divided it by 100. So I used 17 grams of oil, I used 5.5 grams of tap water, and I used two and a half grams of sodium hydroxide, which was exactly what I produced in the saucepan when I evaporated the clean water here. And I went ahead and I mixed it. And you have to mix it for a good half an hour. So you're consistently stirring this for half an hour until it traces. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to get it to trace. And because I was unable to get it to trace, it's an indication that the sodium hydroxide content may not have been strong enough. However, I've gone ahead and I've, shaped, I've shelved it. I've shelved the actual um, little bit of uh, soap that I've tried to manufacture. Actually, I'll be able to show you that here. So this is it here. As you can see, it's um, basically the 17 grams of olive oil, the two and a half grams of sodium hydroxide, or at least what I think is sodium hydroxide, and 5.5 grams of water. I mixed it for a good half an hour, and that will be the basis for all my tests on this, on this day forward sort of thing. So tomorrow night, what I aim to do, because I'm concerned that that's not gonna set, it will take weeks for it to set as well. So, um, however, I should know within one week at least as to whether it's actually gonna work. So the next best thing I can do tomorrow night is instead of using a quarter of a cup, I'll use half a cup of the clear liquid from the top. And then I'll break it down and I'll get five grams of what I think is sodium hydroxide. And I'll mix that through the same quantities of oil. So again, the 17 grams of oil, I won't increase that, it'll be the same as what's in this batch here. And I'll use the 5.5 grams of water, exactly the same as what was in this batch here. And by increasing that sodium hydroxide amount, I should um, increase the soaponification of the fats, or the hydrolyzation of the fats in the oil, which will produce a better, firmer soap. At least, that's what the plan is. Before I go, what I aim to do is to say tomorrow night it doesn't work by doubling the amount of sodium hydroxide I've actually put into it. What I can then do is start using the white cloudy liquid off the bottom of the bottle. So that's this up here. So that's that liquid right on the bottom. So instead of using clear liquid, I'll give that a go. I'll dehydrate uh, the quantity of that. Again, I'll probably start with a quarter of a cup and from that I'll dehydrate it all. I'll use the crystals in 17 grams of fat and the 5.5 grams of water and see if that hydrolyzes the fats any better. And if it does, well that's possibly evidence that the sodium hydroxide is indeed on the bottom and that turns out that the um, liquid or the clear liquid is mainly salts, so leftover salts that haven't been processed. 
It's a possibility. I don't know for certain if that's the case. The only way to find out is to do it. So tomorrow night we'll be doing two experiments. One with the clear liquid by doubling it and one by doing quarter of a cup of the bottom liquid. Should be very interesting. And that's it for tonight, I promise. Bye.